Hey, 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 it's Pastor Mike. If you love what we do at Time of Grace, speaking biblical truth into everyday issues, then you are going to love the podcast, The Non-Microwave Truth, by my friend and brother in Jesus, C.L. Whiteside. C.L. is a high school educator and a coach who isn't afraid to take on tough topics, but always through the lens of God's Word. Just search for The Non-Microwave Truth wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Some people smoke weed. Other people crochet. But all those people do what they do for the same reason. Some people date online and want to meet the one and get married. And some people would rather separate one into two, get divorced. But all those people do it for the same reason. Some people go on diets for this reason and other people eat donuts for the exact same reason. Some people can't wait to get their first social media account or, or check their phone after work or during work. And other people swear off social media entirely for the exact same reason. Do, do you know what the reason is? Do you know why people use drugs or avoid them, want to get married or want to stop being married, use social media or don't? The answer is because all of us want to be happy. Have you ever stepped back to, to think about that? That so much of what you and I do, at the end of the day, if you dig down to the motivations and the reasons, it's about our crazy pursuit of happiness. Like, we, we want kids because we think kids will make us happy. We want to find a babysitter so someone can watch our kids because being away from our kids will make us happy. Right? We want to enjoy this meal because it makes us happy or we're going to say no to this meal because we want to step on the scale tomorrow and feel happy. So much of what we do, whether it's right, it's wrong, it's this or it's that, it's biblical or it's sinful, is because deep in our heart is a desire for happiness. And that's what I want to talk to you about for a bit. Um, it seems to me that happiness and joy are these two elusive things that all of us want. It's pretty rare. I can't think of a single time someone has said, Pastor, I really want to be stressed and sad. <laughs> no, but everyone wants to be happy and peaceful, right? So how do we find it? In the next few videos, I want to open this book, the Bible, and show you what I found doing a deep dive into the words joy, happiness, and peace in this good book. So uh, let's start with joy. I recently learned that the words joy, joyful, rejoice, rejoiced, Rejoices, rejoices, uh, rejoicing, I should say, uh, happy, happiness. They show up about 400 times in the Bible. And what the Bible will say about it is that there are different ways that people try to be happy and some are better than others. I bet you realize this, right? Sometimes we do things to be happy and it doesn't quite make us happy, at least not for very long. Now, the first type of joy I found in the Bible is what I'm going to call bad joy. Maybe that's just another way of saying sin. It's when we're happy about something that makes God sad. The Bible's honest enough to admit that there is a kind of joy that comes from sin. Let me read to you Proverbs chapter 15 verse 21. It says, folly, it's a fancy word for foolishness or sinfulness, folly brings joy. Isn't that interesting the Bible would say that? Yeah, you, you can sin and it will bring you joy. In fact, if you wrote out your last 10 sins and asked yourself, why did I do that? I have a hunch the answer would be happiness. Why did I try to win that argument with my mom? Because I thought winning and being right would make me happy. Why did I have one drink too many? Why did I click on that? Why did I you know, have sex with the person I'm not married to because I wanted to. <laughs> well, why did you want to? Because it felt good. Oh, okay. At the root of sin is this belief that it will make us happy. And, and the Bible says it will. But not for long. I didn't actually read to you the whole verse. Proverbs 15 verse 21 says this, Folly brings joy to one who has no sense. But whoever has understanding keeps a straight course. 
God is honest enough to admit that temptation is tempting because sin can make you happy, but it doesn't make sense. You could spend today giving in to bad joy out of your desire for happiness, but that bad will backfire. That makes me think of Dr. Larry Crabb, a Christian counselor. A desperate man once came to Dr. Crabb and he said, I just want to feel good right now. And the counselor thought and then he said, okay, um, my advice is that you should find your favorite alcoholic beverage, then get some willing women, and then go to the Bahamas. And the guy said, what? <laughs> uh, aren't you a Christian counselor? And this is brilliant. Uh, Dr. Crabb replied, I am, but given your request, that was the best I could do. I just love the honesty of that. What he's saying, what God is saying, what I'm saying to you is that there are ways to be happy right now but they will not bless you in the end. If they don't leave you with a physical hangover, they will leave you with a spiritual one. And so the God who created you for eternal happiness is not making up these rules and saying that these things are sin or do this or don't do that because he wants to rob you of happiness. No, he's a good father. So today, I just want to ask you to believe him. If God says it's bad, believe him. If he forbids it, have faith in it. Have faith in the goodness of a God who loved you so much that he gave his only son, that Jesus would give up everything and, and suffer on a cross so that you could be happy in God's presence forever. If that's what God did, if that's what God is like, then bad joy is just bad. So let me leave you with this to do. Talk back at temptation today. <laughs> when you feel drawn to to thinking that or saying that or doing that or giving into that or crossing the line of living in the moment but before that draws you in too much, talk back and say, bad joy. <laughs> Call it out. Admit it, it might make you happy, but it's bad because your father wants what's best for you. He says it's sin and you believe him. He's a good father. Please don't forget it. Let's pray. Uh, dear God, please give us faith, not just to believe in the goodness of Jesus, but in the badness of sin. You created us with an incessant desire to be happy, but sin corrupts that and it too often leads us into temptation. Protect us today. Help us to be clear-minded, sober in our thinking, and give us the kind of faith to believe that you are a good, good Father in heaven. We pray this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen.